Is that dog's trace? Get my mic up. We're getting mic'd up. We're recording live here too. Welcome back, day two, K9 Street League. Popping collars and watching dogs. Let's go. We've got a great group of dogs today we're really excited about. Uh, I'm excited about sitting next to big bad Bob Owens from Lone Duck Outfitters all day. KD Matthews, making my ego bigger. All right. So the general idea, folks, two-day seminar. We ran yesterday's dogs. We have another batch of dogs and handlers to go today. They're competing against the, everyone we saw yesterday. That's right. So new day, same scorecards. And you know, you gotta think to yourself, the folks that are coming out today got to watch how everything played out yesterday. Absolutely. They got to strategize. Our lovely announcer getting everybody fired up for the day. Stay excited, I'll stay excited today, guys. All right, so first on the list, stepping up is going to be Archie. Representing Ready K9 with his handler, Giovanni. Give me some. All right, so first up, as you heard, we've got Giovanni and Archie. Archie is a Connie Corso. Big dude. And that's what's interesting to watch is seeing the different types of dogs. You know, a, you know, these type of trials, you see a lot of the herders. You see a lot of pointy ears. Yep. And I always get excited to see, I don't even, a lot of people call them the off breeds. Okay. And we call them that too in our in our sport as well. It's almost kind of like if I had an off breed, I'd be like, what's off about my breed? <laughs> my breed's on, man. It is I on. get it. I get the point. Archie. It's usually the herder people saying that's an off breed. I'm with you. So Archie, Connie Corso, Giovanni. So again, Katie touched on it, but yesterday's competitors and dogs are, are, are already scored up and tallied up and they're done. Today's competitors are doing the same routine. So we're starting off with obedience and they're gonna be scored today and all of it's gonna be combined to find our winner this afternoon. And so. let's not forget, first, second, third place podium folks are walking away with cash money. And that's just another awesome element of K9 Street League. Absolutely. You know, yes, you're out here to have fun. Here we go. Yes, you're out here to compete. But people are gonna go home with money. Archie's looking relaxed. This is a younger dog. Uh, I believe he said he was 13, 14 months old. He's got a lot of desire to work, we're told. So I'm excited to see what this young pup's got in the tank today. <clears throat> now already, Giovanni is demonstrating some calmness for his dog. And we talked a lot yesterday about <clears throat> the energy goes down the leash. Yep. And that's whether you're here, that's whether you're home, that's whether you're at a hunt test Absolutely. or a field trial. Absolutely. Or K9 Street League, maybe. All right, we're under judgment. Good composure. Nice, calm, relaxed. You know that he's a little nervous. I mean, this is day one, dog one, or day two, dog one. Sniffing, sniffing. Gave a command. So this is where intelligent handling is going to come into play because Giovanni has to be very careful about that leash. Yes. He has to make a decision. Do I give an additional additional verbal command? Because if that leash gets tight, our Judge Oscar is going to hit him with points like right there. That's right. That's going to be deduction. This dog is taking pretty significant deductions right now. Yes. And and you know Giovanni's is feeling it. Yeah. He's like, come on, dude. All he wants to do is give just a little tug on but that he leash. Can't. He can't. All right. First segment. Dog's curious. Dog's wondering what's going on. I'll be very curious to see how Giovanni handles the next commands. How does he change his tone of voice? Does he bring a little bit more within the rules that he's allowed to right. and communicate with that dog? Focus. Stay focused. More healing. The old weave by the dudes. We got Dan the Canine Man, Cowboy Wayne, Jacques Bonnet. Bonnet. Not bony. 
Don't he does, say he bony. He doesn't want to be called bony. I don't know if it's because... And Mr. Brian Ryan, <laughs> the MD. Standing still like statues. And right now, that's important that they stand still like statues. Why? Their job is not to steal points right now. Their job is to be a neutral presence on the field. However, it is a presence that the dog is aware of because the dog has been trained to bite people in those suits. That's right. Now this is gonna be where he has to sit the dog down, walk, dog has to stay. What is he putting him, is he gonna put him in a down? Is he now putting he him has, in a set? Yeah, he's got he's the freedom to down. choose, sit or down. down. Now he unclips the leash, walks to the other end, end of the field and calls the dog to him. And when he issues that recall command, that's when our decoys, the C's, are going to part. Oh, Moses. I think we should go every time they do that. Wait, that's not yet. Not yet. No bubbles. Folks, we're having a good time here because we want you to have a good time. It's very contagious. You can't be here at a canine street league event and not have a good time. Come on, Archie. Archie came to life on that. Yeah. That dog oh, picked yeah. up and moved. Here, he Archie. moved a little too far out. Archie, you better <laughs> heal up, son. Sit down. What a dog. He took his time. He, he found boy. the home. He found home base. He just kind of went dog. to the outfield. He was like, do I just tag one of these dudes real quick? You want me to just give him a little nibbly nibbles? Just a little nibblies. Oh, man. Good job. All right, I think Archie did a nice job. Young dog. Got a lot of uh, room, for, room growth. for growth as he develops and matures. And I'm excited to see where the rest of the trial takes him. Absolutely. Now, we had the opportunity to actually speak with Giovanni a little bit last night. And, a couple modellos, if you will. Two tree, two tree, two tree um, modellos. <laughs> and we learned a lot about him and his dog. It was cool. And he's coming from a good place with his dog in terms of being really clear on what you want from your dog. And that was one thing in particular I took from the conversation that we had with him. That Absolutely. I think a lot of people could benefit from reflecting on that. And what I'm talking about is, what do you want from your dog? You want a trial, okay. You want to compete, maybe you don't. And each of these behaviors, like when you are teaching your dog to heal, what kind of heal do you want? And right. you know, when you're working with a trainer or with a club, you know, they're gonna give their input. But at the end of the day, it's your dog. And it's good to take that input because it might be constructive in a way where it could help you if you do this or that. Sure. But at the end of the day, it is your dog. And maybe you don't want a heel where the dog is like this that we see on Instagram. Sure. And if you're in a sport where that isn't scored, well, you don't have to do that. I would say we would want a little bit more attentive heel out of Archie for later. Ar Archie could benefit from a little, <laughs> little, little, little more attentive heel. Maybe drop a couple kibbles out your mouth. It's going to my mouth. It's got to be a hot dog. It's a good old sabrat. Easy, bud. Easy. 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 It's, it's, it's still early. early. It's early. It's still early. <laughs> oh, baby. All right. Coming up next, we got Shane. Shane, Shane Murray and Zeus. Zeus. Let's find his sheet. Might be underneath you, bud. You got more over there? No. All right. Well, run and gun with this one. Shane and Zeus. Oh. What do we got? We got a pit bull. Oh, this is your favorite, buds. I do enjoy it. I do enjoy seeing the pit bulls and the bullies. Yesterday we got to watch X, X work. Unfortunately, no. he didn't make it to the end, but it was fun to watch him work. So let's see what this Zeus has to do. Zeus is on the loose. Zeus on the loose. Well, we hope Zeus doesn't go too far on the loose. That's right. Now, a big part of trialing, as we've spoke about it goes beyond the training of the dog definitely not ha okay it, yeah it's the mental preparation of the human and oh, they yeah. have the opportunity prior to stepping up to what we now call the line coming to the line coming baby to the line, it, they have the opportunity to choose how they want to heal the dog they can they can work a little bit out there they're not going to be given corrections i mean the judge is going to be watching that but technically they're not under judgment until they step up to that line and right now shane is doing exactly what i'm talking about it's like he's in the batter's box yes 
He's in the batter's box. He can swing around. He can. He's working the dog. He's getting under control. So he's not the up dog's to the line head right. Yet, but he's made. So he just made a turn. Why did he do that? Uh, he's engaging his dog. He's letting his dog know. Hey man, this is what we gotta do. I love you. I wanna work. I know you wanna work. Let's do this thing. Yeah, again, let's talk about his body language right now. He's relaxed, relaxed lead. You know, I've been there before in our game. I'm still nervous, but I gotta fake it till I make it and keep that dog in the zone. If they feel me be nervous or overexcited, it's gonna go right down the leash. There we go. There you go, bud. He's ready now. Gorgeous animal. That dog is in pristine physical condition. Oh, yeah. Jacked. Jacked. All right. Once he steps up a few more steps, we're going to be under judgment, and it's Boom. game on, Zeus. Let's see what you got, baby. Zeus is on the loose. Shane looks chill, looks casual. Yep. All right. Excellent, excellent. All right. Don't do it, bud. Atta boy. Now looking at the dog body language, looking at his ears, his wheels are spinning. He's thinking. Oh, yeah. He's like, I know I'm in heel, but I know I like to bite those guys. Uh, but I don't think I can right now. This Checking isn't the time. Wayne. Cowboy Maybe. Wayne looks like I'd bite him too. He might not have showered last night. He was up <laughs> late too. Yeah, Cowboy Wayne, Giovanni, and us. We're, we're just enjoying talking dogs. I, I really enjoyed listening to everybody's perspective on breeding programs and specific breeds, breeds that yeah, we they're talked really... about some things outside of the retriever world for yeah, sure. It was really interesting about, I just enjoy talking about people who are passionate and intelligent about their sport, their game, their breed. So it was neat. Those, those guys got it. Those conversations need to happen so much more in the dog world. And, you know, I think those of us who are having them kind of do have a responsibility to let others know that you can have a guy who does pet obedience, talking to a guy who does retriever work, talking to a guy who hunts hogs, yeah. talking to a guy who does that. Like, those conversations need to happen more. Yeah. Oh, well, we learn a lot from each other, and the other thing we learn is that we're not different. There's not much difference. It's a lot, of, a lot of work, a lot of passion. Nice job. Zeus did really well. Zeus is very right engaged. There. Yeah, very engaged with Shane. He's pretty neutral. He's not overexcited. You can tell he's not as relaxed maybe and aloof as Archie, Archie was, but he's not. I really wouldn't have thought he was going to do anything. I felt pretty good about yeah. that run. Yep. All right, now we've got the recall. And when you're working with the pit bulls, you got to be fella. careful. Stay down, big fella. And the reason why you got to be careful is not because they're monsters, but oftentimes I find them to be the biggest babies. They're super sensitive, handler sensitive, and what happens is they got the drive to make the mistakes. Here we go. But they're pretty sensitive when you tell them they screwed up. Here we go. Look at the speed. Come on, Ooh, come on, come on. Look how happy well, he looks. Done. Yes, that son. That was Woo. a gorgeous recall, folks. That a boy. Did you see that little spin in the heels? He was fired up, yeah. dude. He feels good about himself. That was a good run. Nice job to big. I Zeus. enjoyed watching that. I, it was almost like that dog was waiting for that exercise. Oh. Like, this is when I'm going to show y'all what I got. That's he right. He showed us. Good job. Shane and Zeus. Shane Murray. Who we got next? Lauren. Lauren DeHaan and Elsa. Ooh. Ah, the old Belgian Malinois. Now, Lauren is from Battleborn, Vegas. We got some really good clubs. At Street League, from its inception, clubs are popping up Excellent. all over the country. And one thing that I noticed at Trial 1 that we can observe here again at Trial 2 is the massive amount of support that each club brings. This is a community. Yes. You got families, you got kids playing over here in our, in our spectator area. I mean, here we are day two, and we still have a massive turnout. Oh, yeah. The people are standing at the fence just ready to rock. Yep. And, it, you know, for folks watching, you know, when you get involved in this, you're getting involved in a community. And even though you have different clubs that are absolutely in competition with one another. Absolutely. You know, you can walk around here, and we did yesterday, we did this morning, and you've got 
folks from different clubs intermingling, having, hey, I saw your one of your members from yesterday rocking it. Like, That's right. It's good energy all around. That's right. Very positive. And we have an announcer today. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, so we've got Elsa, the Belgian Malinois, and Lauren. They're working together out here, not under judgment. Now, they were at trial one. Okay. I do believe we had a lot of battle born at that trial, and they drove up here to Northern California again for a good shot. Look at this, look at this pop. That's a good looking animal, attentive, ready. This dog's wheels are definitely spinning. Yeah, it's engaged. We got a lot of panting and it is not hot out. No, <laughs> that was one thing I was gonna say. On a day like today, we've dropped in temperature easily by 15 degrees yes. and a light breeze. I'm telling you right now, when the dog is warm, it's, its energy level is gonna be a little bit lower. On a cool day like today. They're getting froggy. They're, they're feeling froggy. So it'll be interesting to see how this weather changes a little bit of that attitude. Especially later in the day when we get to the bite scenarios, Ooh. when there's a lot more physical requirement. Oh yeah, we physical some, and mental. Yes, we got some great healing going on. This dog is, is very much engaged with Lauren. Yes. We're not seeing any sniffing of the decoys. We're getting a little prancing right now. Yeah. This is very focused, very focused heel. What a dog, what a dog. Good handling by Lauren. But she's gotta just stay relaxed, take a deep breath. Dog's doing great, she nice smile. Like she needs to take a deep breath. She right does, there. right there. She you just smiled, she's <laughs> feeling a little better now. Good job. Stay good, cool, calm, and collected. She needs to watch that left hand, the leash hand. And that's something that we saw a lot of yesterday. And after following up with talking with the judges in the evening, you know, they're going to get hit on those scorecards if that leash gets tight. And we exactly. saw a lot of that yesterday, in the, especially in the, uh, once we got into the bites, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Those, those dogs were getting froggy. They were excited. <clears throat> now, one of the things we talked about yesterday that's interesting to kind of bring back up is I am going to, as a handler, strategically say I might have to use this leash a little bit, take some point deductions within reason, right? Like you can't get DQ'd, but within reason, because if I didn't, I might not have prevented a, a full-blown DQ. A, a, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, yes. If, but that's a fine line, Bob, and that's, that's why. 100%. <laughs> to be in their situation, because they cannot give anything that is perceived as a correction. Done Co deal. Correct. Correct. Oh. <laughs> a correct. I see what you did there. Yeah, I see what you did. So yeah, you're absolutely right, but I think that there's a, 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 that fine line. Speaking of the line, right now Elsa is at the line holding her down today. Come on, don't move. Lauren's she taking the walk. She is ready to pounce. That's a photo right there. That is a that photo is of intense. a dog. Yeah, girl. Yeah, beautiful recall. That's an intense animal. I cannot yeah. wait to, to see, to see yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely. Very nice job. Haven't seen any dogs today go down the center of the gauntlet. And that's one of the things I really enjoy about this recall, Bob. Absolutely. Is seeing once the handler gives the recall command, you will see our decoys are going to part the seas. Yeah. They're going to move. And ideally, you want the dog to run down the line at the center. Do you think there's any points? I'm going to confirm with our judges, because I'm curious, I don't know if they're getting docked for deviating yeah. from that line. Um, I mean. I know it doesn't hurt to go straight down. That's right. And just the style of it. But that dog's style throughout the entire process. Was, there was some flash. Was flashy. Absolutely. Now in your world, Bob, in the running hunt tests. Mm -hmm. Explain a little bit about how important 
lines are in terms of direction. So when you are sending a dog on a bird, it's got to go get that bird, mm -hmm. and there might be a water obstacle. There might be a dry land obstacle, like a gulch or a ditch. A gulch? A gulch. I think that is that is a real world. I don't I, know. I'm pretty sure a gulch is a real thing. Okay. Because it made sense when I said it. Um, are you guys yeah. wanting the dog to maintain a straight line? Yep. Are your judges evaluating that? Absolutely. Yeah, we're being judged on all that. And style is another thing that we're judged on. So a dog that does it flashy is going to score higher in the style points. Um, desire, trainability. Um, but yeah, the, the straightest line to the bird is desired. So whether there's a, a piece of water in the way to run the bank of the pond is no good. It's got to teach them to take the straightest line from point A to point B and back via that straight line. And if you don't, you may be out or you may be docked points. It kind of depends on the judges and where you're in the standings of your point system. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So I, I could understand where they say, no, nah, you know, a 10, let's say this was a 10, is a perfect straight line, boom, boom, and it had great style, that's a 10. Going through the decoys a little bit and then to your handler, eight. Going around, seven. Not coming, zero. Biting right. somebody, load up. Negative zero. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, dude. So yeah, we're we're judged on all that, but it's on a point scale of ten mm -hmm. and you you work down. Absolutely. All right, who we got next? Next we got Jared Nolan with Maja. 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 <laughs> I thought we were gonna say it in unison again. Am I Maja. ready? Ready? One, two, three. Maja. Maja. Nailed it. Nailed it. Maja is a Maja the Melamoth. Oh yeah. Jacked. Now look Super at the structure jacked. on this dog. I would be very curious to take a look at the pedigree. Um, you're seeing a very different build. Stout would be yes. the word I would use. Stocky. This female looks like a male. Yeah. Looks like a boy. Yeah. Absolutely. Now typically you'll see that type of look in your uh, your Dutch bred dogs in okay. the Netherlands, uh, in some cases from Belgium, the NVBK dogs or Belgian ring dogs okay. will be stouter, um, heavier bone heads. But this is a thing about when you really kind of go down the, the wormhole, if you will, the rabbit hole of the herders. Sure. Is when you go across Europe, you will see Malinois that are structured very differently. And of course, yes, that's, that's breeding, but why? Why are the dogs looking different? And a big part of that is what sports or activities are they being bred to excel in? Okay. So in Europe, we have, I mean, Europe's older than us, so they got stuff that's been going on a lot longer. French ring, high speed, high speed sport, the decoys are some of the most supreme athletes in all of dog sports. They're like ninjas out there, acrobats. Mm -hmm. Their job is to steal points by evading the dog. They're not putting tons of pressure this way. They're dancing out there. Gotcha. And you can't have, it's, or it's gonna be a lot harder to have a big, slow, heavily muscled dog. Absolutely. You need a dog that can catch those Agile. ninjas. Yes. Agile. Go into all right, we just got word. Unfortunately, Maja was DQ'd. Or, I don't know, it was DQ'd or pulled. I don't, we don't know. DQ'd, unfortunately. Um, little overexcited. Yes, and that's important. Walking up to, you don't even have to get to the line and things can be out of whack. I've been there as well. Me too. <laughs> yeah, been there as well. I've pulled dogs walking up to the line and yeah, said, this isn't no thank you, and turned around and gone, gone back because I recognized my dog was not in a position to be successful. Oh yeah. And I'd rather go load up in the truck than have... Come away with a lesson or a ribbon, yeah. sometimes both. And we are dealing with bite work. So there's yeah. always a potential that someone could get hurt if you do not have the appropriate level of control. So what we have up now is, is Craig Smith and Joy. What well, Joy Joy? Another Belgian Malinois. Beautiful. Good composure out of joy. I'm going to be honest with you. 
Craig, it's chilly out, bro. I'm cold just looking at him. Ooh. We got our flannels on. We got uh, two, extra shirts on. Just two dudes in flannels. Nothing weird, nothing to see here. Joy, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying watching her composure. She seems extremely level-headed. You're, you're enjoying Joy? Nice. Ah, I'm warming up the caffeine's kicking Come on, in, baby, Bob. I need seven more. <laughs> Take a look at this dog and the, the chill factor. I like the tail carriage, it's very neutral. Yep. We're not staring at our owner, but we're not also paying any attention to the decoys whatsoever. Correct. A little bit right there. Cowboy Wayne. It's Wayne. Cowboy Wayne. I think Wayne has some of that cheeseburger in his beard from last night, because I was sitting across from him at dinner and he was plowing that thing. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> Old Joy. I, Joy's composure is, is perfect. When I'm looking at that body language, it's relaxed, it's attentive, it's super distracted, happy, but calm. Mm -hmm. She wasn't prancing like uh, one of our earlier dogs, Elsa, but, you know, for this, for the obedience, man, you need that level-headed. Absolutely. So you're trying to go into bite work with as many points as possible, because once that dog comes back out the truck oh, for the yeah. second half. They know it's bite bite time, and I can't wait for bite bite time. Bite bite time. They, you know, that's where points can get lost. Oh, so we, this should be easy. Like this is where you want to come in strong with the points. That's right. So you don't have to be worried about it. Now here's the here's the thing, man. The high drive dogs are really really fun and stylish to watch. But the control factor is a lot more difficult to get in this environment, right? So they're flashier, they're fun, but don't lose sight that there's a lot of points on the line right here. Oh, Ooh, gotta go potty. That could be a problem. Oh, so no. we just got word. Joy has now been DQ'd for defecating on the field. Ah, that's a tough break. That's a really tough break. I saw as he was coming out of the out of the weave, I saw the dog's back start to arch a little bit. My first thought was, oh no, it's like stomach uncomfortable. Like when you see that roaching. It's like, what's going on? And then I saw her slow down. I saw that tail move. I'm like, oh, she's taking the dookie dookie. <laughs> she might have Dude, that's much. such a bummer. That is, because we were just observing how smooth and composed that dog was oh, in that healing. I really want to see her do, do more. It's just some dookie. Someone can pick it up. Poop happens, man. <laughs> and you know what? That's another thing that on a competition weekend, Traveling, stress, maybe not eating right. I've, to, to myself, have had dogs where they are sick. You know, they're, they're stomach up, vomiting, mm -hmm. diarrhea, and then we come here and ask them to compete and think, you know, clearly. Mm -hmm. God, I hate to see that for them. That's really disappointing, dude. Why? Why is that a rule? You can't poop on the field, man. You just can't poop on the field. It's a dog. Poop out there. She couldn't help it. Well, it's not on the dog. That's on the handler. Yeah, but that wasn't a solid dookie. I, do. I mean, I yeah, if, it, it's, if, it's, I if it's brown, flush it down. I do. <laughs> now, did you, have you seen said dookie? Like, like how? Can we get a close-up on the dookie so we can observe what potential variables might be at play for why the dookie has fallen to the ground? I don't know, man. I'm disappointed for her. I, I feel terrible for Craig. Agree, we all do. And you know, this is a situation <sighs> where, as we were talking about yesterday, we had several dogs that were DQ'd. And there are rules. There are rules. And they have to be applied across the board. That's right. And no one Whether really it's solid or liquid. Or liquid. <laughs> or Wendy smoothie. Oh man. Well, we got some cleanup on aisle seven here. 
Um, so what, I want to go back to something you said because we the dookie interrupted us. I know my train of thought is totally messed up right now. <laughs> right I'm so the, sorry. It's right down the pooper. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> We're here all day, folks. That's right. Uh, Cheesy commentary. Um, talking about high drive dogs mm -hmm. and the challenge. You know, you got that dog that's you know got a lot going on, full of energy. Could it be more? You, you know. You had said that's more challenging. You know, this is where it goes back to how well do you understand your dog? How well do you understand the universal principles of behavior? Mm -hmm. Because there might be an argument that the higher drive can make it easier to build control. It all depends on how you look at it. It all depends on where you're at in your own training journey and your understanding of it. Because I, I don't like fighting with my dog. Right. I want my dog to want to do everything. Right. Do I have to teach them that they have to even if they don't? Yes. Of Correct. Course. But once I've got that established, I want it to be a situation where they want to do the things that they have to do. And I can take that drive and use that. Harness it. You want that thing. You can't get it right now. But if you do this thing I want you to do, oh, you will get that. But you yeah. got to do this thing I want you to do. That's right. And if I can get into that dog's head that doing these things I want them to do will get them everything they want, now I can take that drive, harness it. Right. I can get a quicker out because the dog has learned that. Outing isn't the end of the day. Outing makes all the fun happen. And yep. you get a dog who's crushing in a bite, but also spitting out when they need to spit out because in their mind, that just means more fun. At what age do, do you start putting that kind of control on a bite? How, how is that developed? It's very much dog dependent. Okay. You know, just like you, you know, universals, right? The overlap. You were talking about, you know, you, you got a dog who's real fast. Well, I might slow him down and is healing a little bit to get his head where I need it. Right. Or if I got a dog who's a little slowing down, I might speed him up a little bit and put That's a right. little juice into him. A little him. pep in their step. Put a pep in the step. Same thing when we're talking about bite work, right? You got a dog that's super possessive, super into the bite, even as a pup. I mean, we see it in some of these bloodlines as early as 12 weeks. Oh, yeah. I mean, grabbing things, wrapping them up. All right, I know that dog wants to bite. Yeah. I'm not worried about the drive to bite. I got to start thinking about how I'm going to get them to out. That's right, molding it. Now, at, at such a young age, you can start at a young age. You should, but how you do it matters. Right. And when we're talking about outing, which is a topic that anybody familiar with dog sports knows, it's a hot topic. People struggle with it universally. Oftentimes, it's because of fighting with the dog. They tried to put too hard a control on the dog. They tried to hammer that out and now the dog is thinking that the outing is a problem right or oh, I don't want to do this and that's why you get out in here and they're thinking you know what it's go time I don't want to hear that out I want to keep fighting oh and that's it now you got to bite your dog in training or now you're thinking what do we do here I want it to be fun and I can start that at a young age if you make it a game all right we got our next competitor up Clifford and Williamson and Maya? I'd go Maya. Maya. Not Mia. Some people say Mia. Mia, Ma oh Mia, Maya. It's a pizza pie, yeah. Belgian Malinois. This is a super popular breed for this sport with like 90% of yep. them. Absolutely. Well, this is, we were talking earlier before we got interrupted. Nice by and relaxed. The poop. Um, you know, these breeds are chosen because they are, they excel. Yeah. Like they've been bred for centuries for this type of work. And that's what, you know, in my game, it's 90% Labrador Retrievers. And then the other 10% would be Chesapeake's Goldens, your random Poodle. Uh, poodles? Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retrievers. Oh, oh, rewind. Poodles? Yeah. There's a small, small niche. You like to say niche. I like to say niche. Potato, potato. Um, of folks who brought back the, the standard Poodle in the retriever sport, it, back in the day, that was what the poodle's job was, was retrieving. Ah, good dog. So, uh, but but that when we call them off breeds as well. When it's not a Labrador, it's just something different. 
Now, Clifford and Mia do train with Psych out at South Bay Mountain Watt, and... You're going Mia now? I thought we were on Maya. I, I, I like diversity, man. <laughs> I, I, got, I got to switch it up. All right, a little lack of focus here. Come on, girl. On me for saying the name wrong? Oh, you're talking about the dog. The dog. <laughs> A little lack of focus here from my co-commentator, <laughs> KD Matthews. Uh, South Bay Mountain Law, great club to train with because you're training with Psych, who is a veteran. He's been out here. Uh, he worked yesterday. Dog and white because he was our first place money winner at trial one. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, he was dog and white. He was, Mon his dog's Mongol. Oh, I love that name, by Dude. the way. And it, it's fitting because he's juiced. All right, here we go. The old weave. We got... Courtney out there now. I thought it was Mia. Oh. I see what you did there. Yes, you did. That dude's got beautiful hair and a beautiful beard. Stoic. He's meditating right now. I think he's zen. Is that what they call it? these kids call it these days, bud? It's zen. He's zenning. Nice job. Ooh. Dog took a sniff of Courtney's bootay. <laughs> must be using those new dudes wipes. Have you seen those? It's like wipes for dudes and they got like cologne on them and that's what you use. I don't use them. I use toilet paper. I'm pretty good with that. But. I've heard of the, I've heard. I've heard of these things. All right. Nice control. Now. We're getting ready for that recall. We got that recall and I'll be interested to see how she does because there was just a little bit of look in her eyeball that said these guys look Yummy. biteable. Looking behind her, just a little lack of focus, but good handling bad. on Clifford. You see how he waited Patience. for her head to come back to him before Patience. he issued that down. Patience. Read the dog. We saw that with Susan yesterday. She was very keen in observing when to give the cue. Oh, come on, girl. No. Now, at this point, At this point, he's done. Yep. I'm sorry, There's buddy. There's an apparent lack of control. That's going <sighs> to, Oscar's going to look at that, and he's going to have to have a conversation with Clifford. I'm so sorry. So at this so point, sorry. our judge tells the handler to put the leash on. That is disappointing. I feel bad for Clifford. Maya, that is a tough break. And now they know what they need to go home and work on. You know, and here's the thing, man. We talked about it a good bit yesterday. Inflection in our voice. You know, he's seemingly pretty soft-spoken. A firmer down may have saved that. Yes. She, she was looking around at the line. I need to get in that head a little bit and get that focus back on me and the task at hand. Lesson. We saw some good demonstrations of that yesterday with some of our handlers. Um, in particular, we saw a lot of range yeah. in voice with Polovius yes. and Prowler. Yeah. Right? There, was a, there was a lot of savvy handling going on there yeah. with keeping the voice low and calm for a lot of the commands. Absolutely. And then recognizing when, when he whoa, needed it. Here, I'm going to give a much deeper command because the stakes are higher, in particular, like with the outs. The excitement levels up, and everything. That's why you train in as low and calm a voice possible so that you leave yourself that room to elevate your voice. Absolutely. When you need to. But that's then right. you got to make the decision of when to do that, which right now, don't get it twisted. Everyone's out here with a little bit of a bunch in their stomach. They're, oh, they're nervous. They're adrenaline. Yeah. And that's when you forget things, like maybe I should have. Yeah, he's thinking a little bit more. I guarantee he's walking back to the truck saying, oh, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? And, and again, I've had those long drive home after a test where you're like, I could have handled that differently. Mm -hmm. I could have helped that dog be more successful. All right, next up. Matt Jeremio with Hella. Hella, Hella, hey. Hela. I know that song. Hela. Hella. Hela. That's hella dog. That's a hell of a dog. All right. Now take a look. Okay. 
This just, is a totally different coat color. And I just gotta say, what you got? This is my favorite coat color of your this breed, right? Of these Look type at this of dogs. dog. Here we go. I love He's that. He's part of the Primal dark Canine crew. Collar. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at the structure on that animal. That is gorgeous. Look at the structure on that brim. A little flat for my taste, but we are in California. That's, I get it. That's true. I love it. This is a good dude. He's been uh, announcing for us. Home team primal canine handler and dog here. Nice focused heel. Nice focused heel. Relaxed lead. Confident, cool, calm, collected. You st I, again, folks, you still know that he's got to feel a little nervous competing at this level. But you wouldn't, you wouldn't see it. No, you wouldn't see it. You wouldn't see it. But this it, is by far one of the best healing performances we have seen absolutely. this weekend. Absolutely. He's been practicing. That was a almost flawless. Oh, yeah, deal. baby. Oh, yeah, baby. Stay focused now. Stay focused. He's got a big smile on his face. So when you got a dog like that that you can tell is a coiled spring. Oh, God, yeah. Right? You're going to interact with that dog differently in between exercises than perhaps Giovanni would with Archie, the Corso, who's a little in a different headspace. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a dog that's a little lower, like some of the pit bulls, they could, they could benefit from a, a little, little belly rub. A little yeah. pop, 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 to, okay, I'm doing a good job because yes. they're more sensitive. You a do dog that maybe like, to this. And you could explode. That's right. You could have a money shot before the end of the film. <laughs> Can't have that. Can't have that. Nice job. More awesome healing. I mean, this dog is just laser focused on him and he is on her. Yes, yes, yes. What a dog, what a dog, baby. All right, now he's going right, to return to the line. Easy. Yeah. Get that composure. There we go. Now easy. he's going to go to the line, and now we're going to have our parting of the now seas. Now this, on recall. this dog, this is where I'd be firm. Yep. This is where I, my command would be sharp. I, you heard him. Boom, shotgun down. That dog's elbows hit the deck. That, to me was easy dog, easy. That to me was, did you hear his sharp command? Yes, yeah. it was different than the others. Absolutely. We were just talking That's, about that. Here we go. <laughs> and the straight right down line, the line. This right thing. down the pipe, son. Beautiful work. Matt. My main dude, Matt. First dog to, First dog to run crush. down the chair. Yes, that was crushed. And now we have a perfect heel again back to the starting line. This is control, and at this level, this is what you have to bring to compete. Yep. You, yes. Yeah. Yes, Matt. And now, look at that. I cannot wait to see that sucker bite. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Woo. So if we're looking at the various performances in the obedience. That level of control, that precision is gonna be something to aspire to, yeah. to try to. That's gonna to be tough to beat. That was a podium performance. Yeah, he's gotta continue to maintain that throughout today. But I, I, I'm I really, do it. I think I he think can, he do, can it. do it. He came to play, man. He did not come for second place. Let's no, put it that way. Not at all. Next up, we've got Corey Styles with Shadow. Every dog that's named Shadow, I remind it reminds me of Homeward Bound. Remember that golden retriever named Shadow? Remember the movie? Wasn't Shadow. There Homeward Bound. Wasn't there also like a couple dogs in there? Yeah, it was two dogs. It was him and Chance, and then Sassy the Cat. Come on, get your '90s movies in in game, bud. All right, and Chance was old. And on the way home, you know, the young boy didn't think he'd make it. He was old. <laughs> and then when he sees him come out of the woods, I mean, it's a, I'm tearing up right now. Shadow, shadow. <laughs> Reliving my glory days, bud. Oh, like, we got a cowboy. Uh, so, <laughs> Corey. Corey Styles is also representing the Primal K-19. Corey is one of the decoys, as is 
that. Now, they're not decoying for this trial because right. they are competing. Handling. Right. Corey in his trademark hat. Now, again, one of the things that I think being a decoy and a dog handler, I think that's a huge benefit because you know what it's like out there. You know what dogs feel out there mm -hmm. at being a decoy. And so it's, it helps you get your mind right being a handler. You know how the decoys are going to try to steal points for This is a good-looking dog. Wow. Uh, I like that. I like that. All right, they're about to begin good their control. first healing pattern. Good control. Very focused heal. Look at the hat. Look at the hat. Keep staring at the hat. I can't take hat. my eyes off the hat. Keep staring at the off. hat. What a dog. Nice mm. movement through the turns. Dude, he's deliberate. He's relaxed, confident, deliberate, and he's looking down at his dog. Got to be feeling proud right now. Yeah, indeed, indeed. All right, they've completed the first pass through. Now our decoys are going to get in their line. And Corey will nice, begin nice, weaving nice. through them. We got a little hometown support here. A little hometown support. You know, that support comes with pressure, though. There's got to be some additional pressure being part of the primal team at K9 Street League. Oh, yeah. You better, you, you better be shooting for the podium. That's and they right. know that. That's and right. that's a factor that as individual handlers, they have to deal with that. That's an added bit of mental pressure that they have to make sure it does not go down the leash. That's a great point. Yeah, hometown support is, is huge. But it does add pressure to do well in front of your friends and family. Absolutely. I want my dogs to look even better when they're there. Or when you've got clients there watching you work their dogs. Ugh. And then they fail. Shout out to Hunter. Hunter. <laughs> Hunter. What a dog. Nice job. All Mr. Right. Corey. And Corey Shadow. with a K. <clears throat> Dude, that's a perfect name for that dog. Could you imagine seeing him come out of the shadows coming after you? Whew. No thanks. No. I'll stick with a Labrador. <laughs> Give him a treat. Hunter. I love me, Hunter. All right, so here we go. The dog has been placed in the down. Corey's going to take the walk behind Decoy Row, which will be Decoy Alley here shortly. I like Decoy Row. Yeah, Let's see what you did up. there. Smart. Here we go. Nice. Not down the pipes, but that had style, oh, baby. Look that at had that style. <laughs> that had style. Nice job, Shadow. When you got the dogs that do what we call the front finish, that dog comes into the front and then spins around. Mm -hmm. And you see him coming in hot like that. It's hard not to flinch. You can't flinch, but you know you're about to get some free birth control right there <sighs> when that dog collides. Schwammy. Yes. Beautiful heel on the Now he didn't back. go down. He didn't go down the channel in the middle, but it was a Gorgeous. very purpose pull. Nice job. Recall. Nice job. A nice finish to the heel. Nice. All right, everybody. That wraps up the obedience section. Yeah. Stay tuned. Break time. Stay tuned. Now make sure, make sure you go down and subscribe. Right there's that li lovely little subscribe button. Uh, more content like this, Absolutely. more trials, Absolutely. more training help, yeah. everything you're going to need to learn to be successful and just enjoyment. Exactly. If Follow them on the old button. Instagrams, K9 Street League, Primal K9, KD Matthews. Lone Duck. The Lone D, baby. All right, Guys, folks. thank you for tuning in. We'll be back. Let's do it.